How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. The last 48 hours have been insane in the stock market and in crypto. There's so much fear out there. SVB has some big news here today. They're actually down a lot. So if you don't know what this is, Silicon Valley Bank, we talked about it in yesterday's video, but it's down 61% yesterday. Now it's down 63% pre-hour, uh, pre-market, and it's been halted or uh, paused for trading because they're looking at a possible buyout. So this is one of the largest companies, one of the, one of the largest banks, I should say, in the U.S. If we look at the last one year, this was around... now it's at $40. Uh, Obviously, the market cap is just plummeting. If you don't know what's happening here, quick rundown. And then we'll get into some crypto news too, what's happening in the crypto world, what's happening uh, with some economic data that just came out that's actually pretty positive and causing the market to go up a little bit. If you don't know what's happening here though, Silicon Valley Bank is what it says, right? It's a it's a bank in Silicon Valley. It has lent to a lot of the VCs, uh, a lot of the startups over the last few years. And as you might be able to tell, uh, it's grown like crazy over the last few years, growing deposits significantly with the SPAC raise, with the crypto uh, boom and all that kind of thing. So they had a lot of money that started to flow to them. I mean, they had about $180 billion. Now, what did they do with that money? Well, they parked it in some treasuries, not their whole portfolio by any means, but about $20 billion, a little bit more than that, uh, to go park in some treasuries. However, the Fed kept on raising rates, so the treasuries that they bought were around 1.5% yielding. Now, treasuries are yielding a lot more, like 4 to 5%. And what they had recently is a lot of their clients are really large clients and are asking for their money back because they're blowing through a lot of money. They can't raise funding as easily, so they're going to the banks and trying to withdraw their money which has caused some pressure on the bank. Basically, they had to go and sell some of their assets, some of their bonds, uh, and they had to sell them at a loss because they're yielding less, so people will pay less for them. So they sold at a loss. They lost about $2 billion. That's where they came in and did a stock sale for about $1.8 billion to try to make up that loss that they had from selling the bonds. But uh, they're having a difficult time right now. They've had a difficult time raising this money, and now they're actually looking for a. Uh, they're actually looking to get bought out. SVB Financial and talks to sell itself after attempts to raise capital have failed. Sources say so. They're down significantly in the pre-market. Uh, they possibly are getting a sale. I mean, there's some companies or some banks apparently looking at them to buy them out. But keep in mind that they have a lot of people pulling out their money. They have a lot of clients that have uh, thrown in a lot of money but are blowing through it right now. They don't have the money that they need to actually uh, be able to pay their clients back because they lost money on the bonds. So this is an ongoing story. We're going to have to see what actually happens with this. But obviously, it's It's causing a lot of fear in the market, whether it's crypto or whether it's general equities. The fact is, this is causing a lot of people to wonder about the other banks. Now, the the tough thing about this bank is, right, usually you have the FDIC insurance up to $250,000. They have that too, but the majority of their clients have much more than $250,000. We're talking about companies that have millions and people that have millions in this bank. So they have said that the majority of their deposits aren't actually covered by FDIC insurance which is difficult. So uh, more people are pulling their money out um, and that's causing a bank run. But the other banks are feeling it too. I mean, JP Morgan Chase was down 5% yesterday. A lot of other smaller banks were down 6, 7, 8, 9, 10% yesterday. This is also causing some fear probably in crypto. Now, crypto got hit with a lot of different stuff over the last few days. But keep in mind, some people that invest in crypto are also VCs and some of these people that are uh, that are raising money for these small tech startups. So they might sell some of their equities or they might sell some of their uh, crypto to make up for those losses if they do have losses. So this is shaking the entire market because this is a large bank causing a lot of people to be fearful of the other banks as well. And now we did get some good news here today. Uh, Hopefully this goes through, but we got some other good news. Right now, good news is bad news and bad news is good news. Unemployment rate is at 3.6%, while the expected was 3.4%. Average hourly earnings, 0.2%, and the expected was 0.3%. Last was 0.3%. Average 
weekly hours, 34.5 versus 34.6 expected. So unemployment is higher than expected. This is causing the Fed to actually uh, be less likely to raise rates. You can see now there's a 56.1% chance that we just get 25 basis points versus a 43.9% chance that we get 50 basis points. I know this continues to get repriced all the time, which is where a lot of the fluctuations in the market come in. So if the unemployment rate is going up, well, that means inflation is less likely to continue to go up because more people are out of work. And it also contributes to the Fed's dual mandate. One is keeping unemployment low or keeping employment high. And then the other side is keeping inflation anchored at around 2%. The, ever, the other thing that this report said was that the average hourly earnings are going down. So people are making less increases per hour or are making uh, less raises, which is good. Means that inflation will probably be lower as well because people don't have as much money to spend. And average hourly, uh, average weekly hours is also lower. So not only are people getting less per hour, but they're also working a little bit less as well. So this caused the market to go up on this news. Now it's kind of calming down. Uh, we will have to see how this all shakes out next week because I think CPI is really the largest piece of data coming out in the next week before the Fed meeting. And you can see Bitcoin is under that $20,000 mark. Not exactly what you want to see if you're calling for the bull market to continue. We have stayed right around this $20,000 mark. I wouldn't be surprised if we fell back down because we had seen such a quick move. Now, previously we had seen support at this level. Uh, and now we're seeing a little bit of support now, but I wouldn't be surprised if we fell a little bit lower. Now I'm not trying to spread fear, uncertainty, or doubt. I actually bought here today because I think around $20,000 is still a great price for the long term. but I'm not buying a ton, right? I, I'm still keeping some money on the sidelines. I've done that this entire time. I'm investing an amount that I can need that I can continue to invest for the long term uh, and continue to pick up more Bitcoin over this bear market or over this uh, this time that we're ranging now. Now, I would also like to pick up some Ethereum. I think we could see some weaker Ethereum though, uh, weaker prices because it has held up so well against Bitcoin and with the Shanghai upgrade here soon, some people will probably get worried about the unlock and then I think we could sell off more. Now, let me know your thoughts on all this underneath the video. Again, if you are buying and holding for the next three, five, 10 years, I think this is actually good for us. I think a lot of this happening, assuming you don't lose your money or your deposits somewhere or your crypto somewhere, I think this is good for us over the long term because we are able to buy in at depressed prices. It just doesn't feel like it in the short term because we have gone through so much so far. But let me know your thoughts. I appreciate you watching. Let me know if there's any specific video you want me to make underneath the video in the comment section. And I will see you in the next one. If you want to support the channel, there are links underneath the video to sign up for Moomoo or Weeble and get some free stocks. There's also a link down there to Patreon in case you want to see exactly what I'm buying or selling. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.